What's your name? Hi, my name is Johan, and back in 2014, I had a dream to ride my bike from the frozen Arctic Ocean to Argentina and around the world. So I went to a garage here at Northwest Territories to get a license plate. I'm gonna take it all the way to Argentina. Argentina! Yeah! Five years later, I'm still going. Colombia. Sí. Sí. ¿Y de qué parte viene usted? Yo estoy andando con la bici de Alaska, del Océano Ártico, en Norteamérica. Alaska. Sí. I rode across Alaska from its tallest mountains to the remote north slope of the Brooks Range, and south through British Columbia. I followed the continental divide across the United States, from Montana to Wyoming and straight into the winter. Are you properly equipped for zero temperatures? Yep. Okay. Something happens well, with the bike. Or... Crazy people out here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're not even wearing a hat. It was clear that I did not have the right equipment for the snow. I met with a friend in Colorado and fixed up the bike. And I turned west toward all these wonderful national parks. It started slowly, one by one. But soon I could not believe that these kind of places actually exist. and I kept following the parks to the southwest. That's all right now, Mom. Anyway, you do. <laughs> From the bright lights of Las Vegas to the Valley of the Death. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. After the snow in Yosemite, California was a breeze and I rode with tailwind along the west coast all the way to the Mexico border. Yeah, but how did you get here is what I'm saying. Oh, my bicycle is up there. Okay, you, you can't be here, bro. You can't even be here past 7 o'clock. Really? Because it's at... It's in Give me through. Put your hands on the, on the car. Right Sorry? Put your hands on top of the hood. Yeah, the I started learning Spanish in Mexico and went down into the deepest canyons and the highest mountains. I got the trouble! <laughs> but this is not strong! <laughs> Few smoking volcanoes and few thousand miles later, I was into Guatemala. It was really a land shaped by volcanoes and it was rare that you summit one and not see another smoking in the distance and making you wonder how many days it would take to get there. And with random dog guides everywhere, it was very hard to get lost. As El Salvador was less safe, the only way to get to a volcano was with a lot of company. I fought for road space with speeding trucks on the Pan American Highway in Honduras and felt once again at home on the dirt roads of Nicaragua.
In Costa Rica, I rode the Nicoya Peninsula and had to defend my camp against the cows. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 20 cows. Hey, get out of here, all of you. Piss off. Hey, move it. Nothing to see here. Go away. I rested from the heat with the dogs and woke up to the chainsaws at the coffee plantations. Quanto <laughs> libras? <laughs> Panama, being the end or midpoint for so many, turned out to be an amazing ride. Oh boy. Is this the road or a river? Ta-da! It's the road! Whether it was the unreasonable road engineering or the monster trucks that roam these routes, it was one of the highlights of Central America. It was just as likely that you get hit by a car as it was to hit one, but eventually I reached Panama City and then returned to Canada for a few months of work planting trees and to save up for the next leg of the journey. I purchased a backraft to cross the Darien Gap, but I wanted to learn using it before going down south. So I strapped a bike on top of it and went for a float in the Pacific Ocean. But it wasn't enough. I figured with the raft I can go further north and complete a section that I had to skip in 2014. No, no, is he? Dude, is he gonna charge me? Hey, go away! So I traversed the old canal road and the 200 mile trail into the middle of nowhere. And from the middle of nowhere, I floated down the Mackenzie River for two weeks until I reached the Dempster Highway. Hey look, that's a car. That's a moving car on the road. With some rafting experience in hand, I was ready to go to South America. Colombia. Si. Sí. Come. From picture-perfect islands to the ones where the natives go to drink rum and the Colombian fishermen pay their toll in tuna to stay the night. I was finally in Colombia and ready to see South America. I rode through the lowlands and the mountains through Medellin and to the valley of Cauca, where I had an odd invitation to attend a travel festival in Dubai. I met with many amazing people there and even got a chance to explore the Musandam Peninsula in Oman. And although I made it in time to the return flight to Colombia, the connection in Spain did not work and I was stuck there for 20 days. So I borrowed a bike and went to the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. Assalamu alaikum. and after I had a short taste of the Andalusia in Spain. Back in Colombia, I got a new bike and a friend invited me 
to bike in the completely opposite direction to the border of Venezuela, through the eastern plains, and then I had to return through the roadless, dusty routes back to the mountains. With the rain season came the beauty of the Paramo and the never-ending dream of finding sunshine in the rain. Uh, the road is right over there, but I can't cross this river over here. So I have to somehow get up there. I followed the mountains and volcanoes through Ecuador and in Peru I continued into the silence, as the locals call it, only to find the land of a thousand miners and mountain ranges that reach for the sky. In Bolivia, the rain continued through some of the most remote passes and I was southbound through the endless cellars and toward the Martian landscapes to the southwest. The Chilean railroads and friendly miners led me to Argentina and the remote high-altitude desert of Puna de Atacama where I faded into the vast open spaces and into the kingdom of the wind. A friend joined me for two weeks and we made a new route through the valley of the bones and colorful rocks. The road we hoped to reach was not a road, but eventually we came back out to civilization. I continued on to Mendoza and found a trail leading to Santiago. They do float, kind of. And then I went south, to where the sunsets are the brightest and where the condors fly high above, and the volcanoes have shaped the surroundings in the most remarkable ways. The Chilean coast was full of pine plantations, but I soon returned to the Andes, where my pack raft came in handy to get over the remote mountain lakes. And this is where I am, always looking for the next peak or volcano in the distance and getting ready for the winter in Patagonia. So on this channel you can find over 32 episodes trying to document the ride as best as I can. <laughs>